praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. One more time, I want to honor the angel over this commission and this house. Please help me honor Reverend George. God bless you, sir. Sincerely grateful for this opportunity again. And then um, we met earlier on and let me honor him. Thank you so much, Reverend Chris. God bless you. The Lord honor you. Honor you greatly in the name of Jesus Christ. I honor every man, every woman of God here represented. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray sincerely that everything God has in store for your life and for my life tonight, that in the name of he who died and rose from the grave, at a television that includes the overflow i saw so many people outside it doesn't matter where you are let there be hunger once there is faith i assure you that the god of heaven will touch you right where you are father give me an encounter tonight please open your mouth and pray pray desperately and with passion change my life change my story Give me an encounter by your spirit. Now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Give me an encounter. in jesus name we pray in jesus name we pray we're going to shout seven hallelujah listen 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 seven hallelujah and at the seventh time please i want you to bring all those who are under the anointing there is a spirit of captivity and bondage that has sat upon the destinies of so many people you may not even know that that is what is responsible for patterns and circles patterns and circles the bible says now the lord is that spirit there are many spirits but he is that spirit and it says where the spirit of the lord is you will know that he is the one who is there because there must be liberty now listen liberty does not just mean to be free from spirits it also means to be free from conditions you can be free from spirit influences and yet be under the influence of conditions the bible says even after the spirit left the woman she was still bent the spirit left but the condition was still there and jesus placed his hand and corrected the condition are we together the word hallelujah means halal yeshua it's a kind of praise it's an invocation you are you are calling his name the word yeshua comes from the root word yehoshua where you get joshua and where you get jesus are we together now he answers by the name yeah that when you call upon that name he says i will call upon the lord who is worthy to be praised so by that formula shall i be saved from my enemies someone by that shout there are you know the bible says something about jericho he said jericho was shot nothing came in nothing went out what kind of a place is that because the bible says it is only in your going out and coming in you are blessed that means if you are not moving you will not experience the blessing and jericho shot people so they don't come out and they don't come in are you ready seven when i count the number i like you to shout it halal yeshua hallelujah this is what you are saying father honor your word let fire fall upon this place 
let yokes be destroyed let burdens be lifted in the name of jesus let age-long captivities over women over men over professionals over those who name the name of christ from this campground here and across the entire port Harcourt, including those who are following by way of television internet and even the radio in the name of jesus christ are you ready now number one number two three four Five, six, bring them out. There is something called the shout of a king. He says it is in the midst of them. In the name of Jesus at this seven shout every altar every mountain every invocation of darkness over your life and destiny I come by the rod of the apostolic and the prophetic tonight I declare that by this shout let it come to an end shout hallelujah be delivered be set free be delivered be set free i declare you are loose i declare you are loose i declare you are loose e malaka parato shaleka barakata baratos krateka telekata bring them out in the name of jesus i declare you are loose whether you are an usher or not if someone is under the anointing close to you please help to bring them out so that we save time let that fire fall let it fall upon every orchestration of witchcraft let it fall upon every orchestration in the name of jesus hallelujah the lord is opening my eyes and i'm seeing chains on people's feet chains so that even though you are moving physically in the realm of the spirit you are staying in one place i want to pray fire from heaven comes upon every chain that has tied your feet are you ready now you will shout the name jesus at the count of three one two three shout jesus be loose be loose be loose be loose be loose from every chain tying your destiny every chain tying your children every chain tying your job every chain tying your destiny hallelujah now listen i want to pray and i want you to hold the people who begin to run whether you are an usher or not just bring them out there is a spirit called the spirit of delay and when you are delayed the only thing that grows in your life is your age any other thing remains stagnant i want to pray right now there are men and women who have suffered delay but by the power that raised christ from the dead from the front to the back the left to the right all of the expressions at the count of three everyone who has been under the influence of the spirit of delay as you shout the name jesus let fire fall from heaven are you ready right now one two three shout jesus delay go delay go delay go help them help them help them please delay let that chain be broken 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 bring them out the spirit of delay Samana Katabalakata, delayed ministry, delaying destiny. 
you come under arrest by the anointing of the Holy Ghost you come under arrest by the anointing of the Holy Ghost Rakata bakata barakata balakatosh Sabranta kaparakates Rakata baranto soto balakate Rakata brakata barakata barakata Kabrakotosh koto brakate Lose him and let him go Lose her and let her go Lose him and let him 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 go by the power that raised Christ from the dead. from heaven fire from heaven over everything that is not of God hallelujah now look at me please I want to pray for people here you never have longevity of impact you start things but you never last eventually you will lose what you have whether it's influence whether it's money i want to pray for you this is not for everybody but there are people here even people in ministry there is no longevity of impact listen that was the cause of the nazarenes when nathaniel said can anything good come out of nazareth samson rose he did not last he said don't mind jesus he will not last there's something that is upon that land that they don't have longevity of impact, he was saying. In the name of Jesus. I don't know who was great before. Who was anointed before. Who was favored before. Who was preferred before. And now your name is Ichabod. I come by fire and by power tonight. Every altar that God shuts your progress at the count of three let fire rest upon it now one two three shout Jesus be released be released be released be released be released hallelujah everyone say after me father come on shout like believers say father tonight i decree and declare supernatural advancement open your mouth and pray advancement by the spirit advancement by the spirit no delay no retrogression in one month that will look like 10 years advancement someone is praying a man of god is praying a businessman is praying a career person is praying i go forward i make progress in jesus name we pray shout a believers amen in jesus name we pray amen. exodus 14 15. we'll pray you'll be seated shortly but we need to pray god is in a hurry to change your story exodus 14 15. can you help us media and the lord said unto moses wherefore criest thou unto me speak 
speak to the inhabitants of river state speak to the members of gateway church speak to the believers here present and connected around that they go forward that they go forward that they go forward let me speak over someone i have been commanded to bless whatever has stagnated you kept your ministry your business in one place i stand tonight as a prophetic midwife i decree and declare go forward 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 i prophesy go forward for you and your children go forward for you and your business go forward hallelujah ezra chapter 6 and verse 14 ezra chapter 6 and verse 14 please project it for us i want all of us to read it together if you can see it as loud and as clear as you can are you ready one to read uh-huh and the elders of the jewish build it and the reason why they prophesied was be they prospered was through the prophesying not just the intelligence of their architecture the prophesying of Haggai the prophet and Zechariah the son of Edo the Bible says and they built it and they finished they finished when God is allowed to be Alpha then he must be Omega don't be tired of hearing what you are hearing prophecy programs realities upon your destiny Ah, the Spirit of God is taking me to Genesis chapter 21 and verse 1. This is a prophetic word for someone. I want to speak it to someone. Genesis 21 and verse 1. Shout it as loud as you can. Want to go? Uh huh. one more time now you put your name there are you ready one to go shout it say father one more time father my visitation i receive now open your mouth and pray i receive my visitation by the spirit of grace and the Lord visited Sarah as he has said did unto Sarah as he had spoken visit me as you have said do unto me as you have spoken hallelujah we'll be seated shortly but i want to pray for you there is a lady called ruth you don't have to come out for time but wherever you are a lady called Ruth your name is Ruth the power of God is coming upon you now and the Lord is telling me that he's turning your morning to dancing a lady called Ruth your name is Ruth I still have it a, a little teaching for us to do and I don't want to take that time a lady called Ruth wherever you are in the name of the Lord Jesus receive this as your prophetic word the power of God is coming upon you and in the name of Jesus morning is giving you morning I mean the beauty for ashes 
and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness he's turning your morning to dancing your morning to dancing how many of you brought your prayer request tonight let me see your hands how many of you are yet to write i will pray for these ones in front so that they go and sit down and then i'll give everybody a minute or two while you are praying in tongues it doesn't stop you from writing once you put down your prayer request let me please make the request that you pass it to the last person by your left or right to make it easy for the ushers there are so many people and all of those who are across the expressions if there is no provision to drop your prayer request you can connect by faith don't worry god sees your heart of faith are we together now father i pray for all those you have brought out by the spirit that in the name of jesus everything you have been delivered from never returns to you again and every grace that has rested on your life begins to speak now in jesus name we pray let's appreciate them as they go back to yes the world will bow down and say you are god every man will bow down and say you are king so let's start right now why would we wait king of glory feel this place just wanna be with you just wanna be with you king of glory wanna be with you in the name of Jesus Christ take a minute very quickly to write your request write it carefully write it intentionally please be seated write it carefully write it intentionally with the spirit of faith the Bible says in Philippians chapter 4 and verse 6 it says be anxious for nothing it says but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be made known don't assume let your request be made known let your request be made known in the name of Jesus Christ for someone by the time it's Sunday you will stand here and it's your tears that will be doing the testimony because you will not know where to start from and where to end it's going to be a plethora pages after page of god's faithfulness in your life you believe and you receive that shout amen in the name of jesus i have a very brief charge tonight and then we'll pray i hope you're not tired of praying it's a good bargain to invest your time in prayer the bible says he that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption but he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life everlasting the time that you are investing in his presence now is like a farmer who is sowing you are sowing to the spirit and there is a guarantee that when you sow to the spirit of the spirit you will reap life eternal hallelujah praise the name of the lord yesterday i charged our hearts on a few things and i just want to do a two or three minutes recap very quickly and then we'll just connect with what we're discussing tonight i started by telling us that it is in our corporate destiny in christ to experience a life of victory dominion and fruitfulness who still remembers hallelujah that everyone who is born of God everyone who is in Christ by reason of redemption is ordained for a life of dominion ordained for a life of victory ordained for a life of fruitfulness hallelujah and that it is in God's interest for you to walk in dominion the reason is because 
number one i taught you yesterday that in your fruitfulness god is glorified upon the earth the way he gets glory according to john 17 and verse 1 is that he glorifies the son that the son would bring him glory hallelujah so god is glorified in my life he is glorified in your life when we produce results when we manifest dominion in reality the bible says what is man that thou art mindful of not the son of man that thou visitest him that you have made him a little lower than the angels you have crowned him with glory and honor you have set him above the works of your hands and that in doing so you left nothing that should be under his feet all things was put under his feet hallelujah but when apostle paul was teaching the hebrew church he said we do not yet see all things under his feet that even though this is your divine ordination for many they are yet to enter the experience of dominion victory liberty and fruitfulness in experience then i did tell us that redemption affords us access to the riches of this god life the riches of this god life but that access does not equal possession you can have access but there are dynamics that you must engage to bring you into the experience of that which is finished in christ for instance from the foundations of the earth the lamb was slain yet there are still people dying and going to hell today in spite of the fact that by the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus all things sin all things defeat should have ended by the way remember what i told you that we have received as a result of the death of jesus that when jesus died he brought us liberty over seven things let me do a quick recap number one sin number two satan number three death number four hell number five the grave number six the world number seven the flesh hallelujah so he granted us access to victory across all of these limitations but that the dynamics of accessing and appropriating them differ when it has to do with the sin problem there is no amount of prayer and fasting that solves the sin problem you have to receive the life of christ and that's by confessing the lordship of jesus but when it has to do with the flesh you cannot bind and cast you die daily through renewal transformation and the discipline of conformity are we together now so the dynamics when it has to do with victory over the grave is beyond just casting you have to confess by choosing life you choose life by making declarations and making pro-life decisions that is how you appropriate the victory over the grave you can be free from sin but if you do not engage that which makes for victory over the grave you will be a victim of the grave are we together now praise the name of the lord and so we took our time to discuss that there are promises there are mysteries the bible calls them that we must know and engage to appropriate victory and dominion in our lives here and now there is a body of spiritual knowledge the bo a body of spiritual information that empowers the saints to manifest dominion in experience so when you find out what god has said about you when you find out the exceeding great and precious promises that he's made available for you in christ your next assignment is to know how to engage them appropriately because the bible calls them keys no key is powerful on its own you see the power of that key when you engage it in a door are we together if you hold a key it will do you no good until it comes in the presence of a door and it connects to the keyhole and then you turn it then it opens the door for you so truth remains barren and impotent 
until it is engaged when the bible says you shall know the truth the word know there does not just mean be aware of the truth it's a very complex word that captures within it comprehension of the truth alongside the fortitude to engage that truth to deliver wealth and abundance in the kingdom is governed by a body of light the bible calls it marvelous light walking in divine health in experience is governed by a body of truth influence is governed by a body of truth are we together now speed like you'll be learning is governed by a body of truth accessing the gift and the help of men is governed by a body of truth your assignment after you get born again the holy spirit exposes you to the ministry of the spirit which is his own ministry the ministry of the word and the ministry of a teaching priest these tripartite forces begin to guide you onto maturity when you get saved and you do not encounter the ministry of the spirit the ministry of the word and the ministry of a man of god as a teaching priest who methodically mentors you you will be stunted and you will remain defeated even though saved the bible says an heir for as long as that heir is a child he differeth not from a slave even though he be lord of all but he's kept under tutors until the time appointed are we together he says there remaineth a rest for the people of god even though they are the people of god there still remaineth a rest for them then he says let us labor and the bible shows us how to labor that we labor in word we labor in doctrine we labor in prayer we labor in faith to enter our rest hallelujah let me challenge you in your faith walk just a digression do not desire power at the expense of wisdom what gives value to power i taught you yesterday is wisdom what gives definition and credence to power when power comes in honor to wisdom it becomes a glorious sight to behold it is a twin combo that benefits the saints but when you press for power without wisdom you will abort that investment of power wisdom is what preserves power are we together now it's important for you to know this many people have pressed through prayer through fasting wonderfully so for the power of god but they lack the requisite wisdom that gives credence and value to the power of god the bible says through wisdom a house is built any house any destiny is built and it is at the mercy of wisdom speaking about wisdom he said by me kings reign and princes decree justice with me are riches wealth and honor yet durable riches and righteousness those who pursue wisdom and pursue it genuinely they find it because there is a law in the spirit that everyone who asks receives everyone who seeks finds matthew 7 7 and 8 and to him that knocketh, the bible says the door shall be open breathe lord breathe breathe lord breathe breathe upon my life breathe lord breathe breathe lord breathe breathe upon my life i receive i manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up exalted i receive i manifest your power and your wisdom till the nations see jesus lifted up glorify receive manifest his power 
his wisdom I'm praying for you receive manifest his power his wisdom receive manifest his power his wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up he's exalted receive manifest his power his wisdom till the nations see Jesus lifted up Glorify, breathe, Lord, breathe upon my life. Will you breathe, Lord, upon your ministry, upon your business, upon your family? One more time. Sing, breathe, Lord. That's what is happening to you. That whilst you are seated here, you are being immersed. It's a baptism. You are receiving something that is influencing your spiritual understanding. Recall yesterday, I told you that Satan is a thief. Still remember our discussion? I told you what Satan steals. Satan is not interested in money. There's nothing he needs to do with it satan is not interested in your health satan is not interested in your children your spouse your promotion no it looks like he's interested but he's not what satan is interested in is your spiritual understanding that is the real thing he steals when satan comes to a life he doesn't touch your finances he only touches your finances if he's finally gotten a hold of your understanding understanding is a priceless commodity in the spirit just help those under the anointing that's why the bible says guard your heart more than you guard your account because there is a thief somewhere and that's what he's looking for guard it be alert the bible says be sober then it says be vigilant for your adversary the devil like a roaring lion he moves to and fro looking for whom he may devour he's looking for your heart your spiritual understanding tonight let me talk about one of the mysteries of the kingdom and then we'll pray is God helping us so far tonight by the Spirit of God I want to teach you how to redeem time we want to challenge the spirit of delay and stagnation he must die permanently on this ground this night in the name of Jesus Christ now please let me your attention and listen very carefully the unit of destiny is time please write that down the unit of destiny is time it then means that the way you measure destiny is as a function of time whatever you give your time to you are giving a portion of your life a portion of your destiny to that is why the span of a man's entire sojourn is called your lifetime from birth until you finally transit is called your lifetime a measure of the time you are born until the time that you transit is called your lifetime Everything that attacks your time has attacked a portion and a part of your destiny. Are we together now? That whatever you give your time to, you have given a part of your life and your destiny to. The Bible challenges us to be aware of this mystery called time because time is a mysterious phenomenon in as much as we know it so far. From a human standpoint, time only goes forward. As much as we know, it doesn't go backward. You'll never go into 2023 again. 
it's gone in fact you will never go into yesterday again as beautiful and as glorious as yesterday was in this place and on this ground how many of you know that yesterday was part of the tomorrow with respect to last week when you were mentioning tomorrow last week yesterday was part of it and yet mysteriously it's gone how many of you still remember rejoicing over the new year celebrating 2024 it was so pleasant to write 2024 now you're tired of writing it we're already in october are we together now and some of you are looking forward to tomorrow next week and like the blink of an eye you watch yourself celebrating christmas again then another new year if you are going to be alive shout amen yeah. hallelujah it's amazing now there's nothing from a human standpoint you can do to stop the chronological passage of time the word chronos means time as it is measured by a timepiece that it keeps going forward only and never backward and together now very very important when you woke up this morning this night was still a future with respect to your morning and right now this night is your present and how many of you know that the concept of present is really a mirage because present is not more than one second and it becomes a past immediately what you call present two minutes ago is no longer present now <laughs> isn't it amazing that time just like the godhead is also tripartite there is past there is present and there is future are we together now the past is a capture of events that have gone doesn't matter whether it was judiciously used or not time is a record of history past it's gone your present now is the moment and then your future is what becomes as a result of the passage of time or as a result of the investment that you make in anticipation for that future this is very important now please look up for various reasons many people have not made a worthy investment of time in fact let me say this there are three ways you can engage time number one you can waste time like many are doing unfortunately number two you can spend time like a currency number three you can invest time like you do investments you can waste time you can spend time you can invest time when you waste time it becomes unfortunate for you and your destiny when you spend time it is good but then you will not be able to have any returns because you're spending the same way you spend money you don't spend money anticipating returns on it and then you can invest time hallelujah now time gives us an opportunity to make destiny progress time gives us an opportunity to make destiny progress time gives us an opportunity to serve the purposes of God with our lives and our resources and our energy the unfortunate thing for many people is that they allow time to pass without any justifiable investment that was made within that time are we together now now please look at me did you know that in Africa the average person who is born within the African continent and particularly our nation chances are excellent that time will be against you by far by reason of your background most likely the individual will go to school late most likely the individual will be established late especially with the cancer spiritual cancer that has bedeviled many within the African soil it, we 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 don't seem to see the excitement in achieving things early there is a spirit that prides over lateness within africa are we together now so for whatever reason reasons of carelessness reasons of ignorance reasons of demonic oppression many have had time go against them we say that time is against you when you have not made justifiable investments with respect to the time available 
here's how the psalmist said he said teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom paul puts it this way and we'll be going there shortly in ephesians chapter 5 from verse 15 he's mentoring the church in ephesus and he's teaching them something about how to have dominion over time he says see then that ye walk circumspectly the word circumspect means with wisdom accurately with precision as wise and not as unwise then he says in verse 16 redeeming the time the reason is because the days are evil redeeming the time because the days are evil the highest level of dominion that a man can exert is not dominion over demons it's not dominion over spirits is dominion over time because it is the one thing that if it leaves except god shows you mercy it is gone you can lose money many have lost money but when they had time they got it back other people make careless decisions like the prodigal son but they had time and so they could get it back look up please did you know that everything in your life as far as your earthwork is concerned only finds value if there is time in isaiah chapter 38 the bible speaks about a man there called hezekiah the bible tells us that he was sick unto death and prophet isaiah came to him and said thus said the lord um this sickness you will not recover from it put your house in order for you will die in other words time is against you and is finally ended even though he was a king even though he was a great man because time was against him every other thing in his life did not have value again the bible says hezekiah turned his face to the wall and he cried unto god beseeching the lord to give him more time god did not give him more money in fact surprisingly the bible does not even say god healed him at least not recorded as part of the initial things that he got but 15 more years was added to him and everything came back in place the prodigal son his saving grace was that he had time the rich fool had money had most likely influence but the one thing that was taken away from his life that crumbled everything was time he says today this day that which you have time is taken away from you that means for someone seated here you need the mercy of god fast because with respect to the orchestrations of your destiny the truth is that time is against you now please look up there are four ways we interpret time with respect to a man's lifetime let me say this very quickly because i need you to understand my discussion tonight there are four ways we interpret time with respect to our sojourn on earth number one there is what we call the morning stage of your life i want you to listen carefully the morning stage of your life in my honest description i describe it as the first 25 years of your life the morning stage of your life the next is the afternoon stage of your life accounts for the next 25 years of your life from 26 to 50. the third is the evening stage of your life from 51 down to 75 the final stage of your life is the night stage now these four stages is at work in every man's life right now whether you are aware of it or not the morning stage the first 25 years of your life and according to god's design there are things that should happen within that time and if they do not happen within that frame time is already against you are we together now that by 25 according to god's design an individual should have been saved should have met jesus are we together now should have submitted to a teaching priest understood the ways of god be on by by 25 there are certain things that should be at work in your life most likely supporting a family most likely rising your children growing your job you should have been done with school most likely but do you see that for whatever reason your fault or otherwise there are many by 25 you don't even know jesus and yet the time keeps passing 
for someone now you go to know jesus at the corridors of the second phase your afternoon phase is already over i'm saying this to you so that you will pray the kinds of prayers we are praying tonight redeeming the time can you imagine a man building a house at 75 years it's not a testimony it's not are we together now or a man completing primary school at 67 no knowledge is a waste but i can tell you that man will be sleeping in class and he's right because at that age he should be sleeping is someone learning now by demonic orchestrations men in partnership with spirits or ignorance some of you have not made a justification of your days and right now the truth of the matter is that time is against you are we together now say for instance with all due respect a woman who said got married 15 years ago how many of you know that if that woman gave birth nine months after her wedding her first child should have been at least 14 years now i'm sure she should be done are we together now but let's assume that that woman for whatever reason medical demonic now 15 16 years and there's no child how many of you know that with respect uh, something about the equation of our destiny has been altered this is why you are gathered tonight that it is true that time for many of us is not as ideal as it should be there are only few people on earth who have had the equation of their lifetime as accurate as god intended those who had the leverage of mentorship those who were able to drink from the pain of those who went before them my prayer for you is that what you suffered may your children not suffer it ah no 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 somebody is not receiving it from the depth of his heart i'm saying it again that where you cried your child should not cry where you went through pain your children should not go through pain someone shout say it ends with me one more time say it ends with me yes sir poverty ends with me reproach ends with me shame ends with me delay ends with me in the name of jesus christ listen i want you to really pay attention to what i'm teaching shout it again say it ends with me please sit down now you imagine say a gentleman in this place your ordination by grace is that you become a mighty prophet of god in port Harcourt. and based on god's timeline for you you are now 40 or 45 and you just got born again last year do you know it takes time to know god it takes time to build capacity in the spirit it takes time to learn the things that make you a man of power with respect to destiny time is already against you say it again it ends with me how about someone who because you came from a poor family when your colleagues were going to school it's not laziness you could not go now that you should be having a phd you are still trusting god for jump i'm not insulting you i'm just telling you the reality of life that time is not as ideal as it should be shout it again it ends with me now listen let me tell you the truth there are many many children in africa by the time you become a man you have to pay the price for the mistakes of those who went ahead of you before you even start your own life there are battles you have no business fighting but because people who went ahead of you were careless ignorant and were not serious with god with all due respect some of them may have gone to be with the lord and as the first son you step into something you are not even aware of and you have to borrow 20 years out of your life to solve another man's problem before you now get back to even know what is going on around your life someone shout say it ends with me it was not your fault that those who went ahead of you worship masquerades 
and worship ancestors and they covenanted your destiny when they were saying it they included you without your permission then suddenly you arrived and that cause began to work and that covenant began to work now you are 50 and yet in the spirit is like you are five years old someone shout it ends with me hallelujah sit down please sit down sit down hmm. there are many grandparents who are still crying their children are joining them now to cry the grandchildren have joined the queue soon the great grandchildren will come four generations sitting together crying because of poverty crying because of patterns in the name of jesus i cry unto the god of my covenant that anyone here that those who went ahead of you were not a worthy testimony because my god brought you here i decree and declare it ends with you now in the name of jesus please sit down let your spirit be open and angry tonight some things have to change in the name of jesus christ are we together now some things have to change dear man of god based on the calendar of your life you should be traveling across nations now carrying the power of god but you are still yet to even understand the rudiments of the kingdom dear worshiper based on the blueprint of your life by now you should be singing his sounds to the nations mm. oh that embargo breaks it breaks that embargo breaks that embargo breaks over it doesn't matter what local government you came from it doesn't matter what region of rivers what region of portacot you are hearing me from but at the sound of my voice in the name of jesus i call tonight your night of deliverance now please sit down please sit down there are many people today in old age they go to their graves in pain and anger because they cannot justify the use of 80 years they cannot justify the use of 90 years there are others right now after 30 years the only thing that has changed in your life is your physical stature nothing else not more wisdom not more fire not more passion not strategic relationships not vision not determination not your finances let them go i'm seeing a vision in the spirit let them go release them now in the name of jesus listen the bible tells us that there is a strange operation of spirits called canker worms and that they can eat years is that in your bible <laughs> ah, you you can't see them but you can see their effect that you just know what did i do from january till now i am in october no friends no house no education no advancement yet you sleep every night and you wake up in the morning i will restore to you he says the years that the canker walls listen for someone you need to listen to me now when you buy a product intelligent people listen to me when you buy a product there is something under called best before have you seen that whether a toothpaste best before that means if you attempt 
to consume this product after a predefined time the producers are not liable for whatever casualty you have that is their contract with you as you are buying it if you want to take this pack of whatever it is best before and there are certain products because they are made fresh they cannot last more than three days they say consume immediately after opening if I give you a gift of a brand new expired toothpaste that expired in 1999 and I package it I give it to you even though it was never opened are we together now it no longer becomes a gift what changed not the packaging what changed time but not just time time did something to the content and what should bless you has now become a cause can I tell you hear me every time is not convenient for everything no you will be lying the Bible says I must walk the works of him that sent me while it is while it is while it is he said for the night cometh the night like faith it comes and he says when night comes no man can walk again man of God are you hearing the night cometh <laughs> ah, the night cometh the night cometh if you want to dry your clothes and have it to dry fast what time what time nobody dries his clothes in the night on a rainy day in portacot and expects the clothes to dry in five minutes do you know that there is an advantage the day has that the night does not have am i right on that when you are driving you don't use your headlight in the day your headlamp is not necessary but when it gets to the night the color of your car does not matter because what brings beauty out of it is vanished it doesn't matter whether you are driving a red car it doesn't matter whether you are driving a rolls royce once it is night what really matters is the headlamp if it is not there you can die with it beauty is only seen in the day it is seldom seen in the night who is learning tonight are we together now it is true that time can be stolen it is true that time can be wasted it is true that time can be invested there's no time for me to show you these instances in the bible but let me pick one of them there was a young boy in the bible called the prodigal son have you read the story i hope you know that what he wasted was not money no what he wasted was He left his father's house and the Bible says he spent his money on riotous living and in the course of time everything finished he was now feeding with the swine he had degenerated in honor and glory until he became one who was less than the servants where he was coming from time hallelujah now time does not change anything in itself Time only reveals. Time reveals investments. Time reveals carelessness. Time reveals ignorance. Time reveals knowledge. Time reveals, but it does not on its own change things. You've heard me say it many times for those of you who may have listened, that this idea of one day go better is absolute nonsense. It's not such. It's just a comforting statement. One day will not be, it will not be better. No. You said it in 1999, till now, nothing has changed. It is what you do with time that determines whether you will smile tomorrow. Are we together now? Time. Now, I want to teach you two scriptural ways to remedy the issue of time. Two scriptural ways. And then we'll discuss one of them. Is God helping someone tonight? There are two ways that God helps a man who has wasted time. There are two ways God helps a man who has aborted time. There are two ways God helps a man 
whose destiny is about to be shipwrecked because time seems to be against you are you ready number one the first mystery that helps you to exert dominion over time is called restoration restoration number two the second mystery is called speed these are the two ways that God helps a man ah. Yahweh Rafa Elohim Shaddai Jireh Adonai Manifest yourself Yahweh Rafa Elohim Shaddai Jireh Adonai Manifest Now When your case is an emergency in the spirit God helps you by giving you both. Both restoration and speed. I'm saying this because this is someone's prophetic word tonight. Because of the emergency, you've wasted time. You need more than restoration. You need more than speed. You need both of them by mercy tonight. Now listen, let me tell you what restoration is. Restoration does not mean to go back in time. No. God carries the events that were scheduled to have happened in your yesterday and brings it for you into your today. It's called restoration. Are we together now? Speed is your rate of accomplishment per unit time. Now for those of you who watch movies and you use a video, whether it's... Um, your remote control or your phone there is a device there that helps you to regulate those motion pictures there's something called rewind am i right on that there's something called play there's something called fast forward in fact there's something called stop am i right on that there are times that the movie is playing and you may run to use the restroom and you just miss a very important part of the movie and because of it you'll be confused whatever else you are watching you have an advantage you can press something called rewind and go back again as if you never miss the time and watch what you would have watched unfortunately that only works like that for a movie in life you can't go back but there is one who controls time god himself ah Allah is turning things around is turning things around yeah Allah is can you sing it one more time with faith in your heart is turning things around hallelujah so for someone from 2020 to 2023 it was a very kairos moment in your life where certain things should happen prophetically but that was the month you backslid you were unserious satan seemed to have gotten and hijacked your attention and right now certain things happen within that season you are not even aware of its effect there is God the restorer. God can restore things, but God can restore years. Are we together? And the way God restores years is that he takes what should have happened yesterday to have been an advantage to your today and he fast forwards it and features, he replicates that scenery back into your today. For instance, if you were to have met a destiny helper in 2020 and by prophecy that helper would have helped you help your children 
and by carelessness lack of discernment or demonic orchestration that destiny helper is out of your life he didn't even come in let me tell you what god does provided that man is still alive god will still reschedule that meeting again in the name of jesus the son of the living god so restoration has to do with god taking the realities and the events that would have been captured in your yesterday and then he presents them before your today giving you a chance to maximize destiny but let's talk about speed this is where i want to dwell speed hmm. what is speed accelerated accomplishment within a short period of time accelerated accomplishments within a short period of time i'm defining speed with respect to destiny actualization i'm not giving you definitions of physics and chemistry we're dealing with destiny here you go and do what you have to do in the classroom when you resume next week or whatever but now um if you know that definition and you don't know this my definition you will pass there and fail for the rest of your life accelerated accomplishments with respect to time even if limited time hallelujah did you know now let me talk a bit there are many of you here who are business people you are entrepreneurs let's speak business for a few minutes how many of you know that one of the things that determine the value of an organization serving products and services is prompt delivery not just the quality but that it can be delivered with speed there are a chain of you know grocery stores or you know food stores in portacourt you have all their names and you call them fast foods what is the advantage that you are able to grab a meal with time the shortest possible time they would have prepared that meal ahead or per boil whatever they need to do and sometimes you sit in a restaurant and in 10 15 minutes a meal that would have taken you two hours can be made available for you in 15 minutes but you pay for that person's proactiveness he anticipated your coming and started cooking before you arrived and because he saw it you will pay for that intelligence are we together now so speed is accelerated accomplishment per unit time when we are able to do much within per unit time i give an example let's say now we're in october imagine with me let me paint a picture for you and see if you will shout amen over it that by now to december someone can give you a house literally I know you don't believe it. Or from now to December, you will find one man that is equivalent to 30 people in your life. And that that man will say, I was sent by God, sent by God, sent by God to lift you, sent by God to help your children. It's called speed hallelujah now you believe what i'm saying this is no entertainment at all god is reprogramming your destiny turning you to be a sign and a wonder are we together let me show you a scripture very quickly and then we'll pray my god ah someone's life is changing somebody's life is changing in the name of jesus Give us Genesis chapter 27. We're arriving at 20, but let me give you a little background. Ah, the next time we see you, we will not even know it was you again. Because God would have so changed your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now please sit down and listen carefully. Let's go back to Genesis chapter 27 so i'll tell you the story very quickly for sake of time here is isaac about to bless his sons so that he would depart and then isaac calls on to jacob or esau and says esau you are my son go and make me venison such as my soul delights in 
so that I can bless you and then I'll die. You get the story? And while that discussion was happening, the Bible tells us that Rebekah, the mother of both Jacob and Esau, she was listening to the conversation. And as soon as she heard that, the Bible says Esau went. Esau was diligent. Esau was productive. Esau was not lazy. He went into the field to go and catch one of these wild animals and with it to design or, or cook a nice meal like his father always loved. Now watch this. The mother now calls on to Jacob and says, Jacob, come. Something serious, something destiny defining is about to happen. Don't miss that moment. It won't come again. He said, go to the back of the house. That means Isaac's request was not an issue of luck. It is a law. Are we together now? That when you want to receive blessings truly, it comes through the platform of honor. Not just hunger. Not just desire. The man already had cattle at the back of his house. And the mother said, quickly, go and get one of those. Let me prepare for you. Now watch this. At this time, Isaac is already blind. So he's not able to see. Are we together now? Then the Bible says, while Esau is in the field trying to get the, you know, the animal struggling to pick it up, the Bible tells us that Rebekah helped Jacob and he prepared and then she said, ah, but I have one issue. My elder brother is hairy and then I'm not hairy. If I go to daddy, he will feel me and without hair, he will curse me. I will, I will secure a curse on myself. And the mother said, don't worry. There's already a plan for that. And then they, she found a way of covering him. Now watch this. I'm giving you the context and then we'll go to verse 20. The Bible now tells us that when he went to Isaac, Jacob now, give us 19 and 20. Look carefully. Jacob said unto his father, I am Esau, your firstborn, and I have done according as thou bidest me. So he's telling lies, but there is a principle I want to draw from there. I pray you sit and eat of my venison, that thy soul may bless me. Verse 20. And Isaac said to his son, How is it that you have found it so quickly? In other words, by the normal course, you should not have arrived by now. No! The law of diligence notwithstanding. I am a hunter myself, he's saying. I am a farmer myself. I spent my youth taking care of sheep too. Nobody arrives by this time. And here is the answer. He said, Father, even though he was lying, but the principle was not a lie. He said, because the Lord thy God has brought it to me. This is why I arrived on time. That what my brother was looking for, God is able to bring it to me. And that is why I served you. And the Bible says that was convincing enough. He checked him, felt the hair, and then he blessed him. And as soon as he was done blessing him, the elder brother returns back, not with laziness, but no speed. That he arrived there and said, okay. And Isaac said, who is this again? He said, I am Esau. He said, no someone who came ahead of you another instance in john chapter 5 the bible talks about a pool called bethesda he said upon that pool there were many lame weak they laid there for the staring of the water is it in your bible and that an angel would come there once in a year and stare up the water and whoever was the first timing the first to fall into that water he was cleansed of whatever infirmity he had here comes a man who came there and after two years he never became first for 38 years never became first for 38 years not from a competitive standpoint but that man was lying close the solution was there every year i'm sure after five years he would say no problem by the sixth year and time kept passing his infirmity remained he degenerated there 
this is one of the longest standing case recorded in the Bible we don't know how old the man was when he got there but at 38 years to his time stagnation and delay and then when Jesus comes to him in John chapter 5 he says that he had been a long time Jesus now says will thou be made whole the man said I have no man I have no man we're coming there I have no man there is no advantage in my life to help me gain speed and because of that just when I am about to jump in another who probably has a man to help him so men were allowed to help the people get into the water is only that he gave us a clue as to how others became first there were men who helped them are we together now but that in his case the reason why I was there but never got in was I had no man the man at gate beautiful had men who could carry him every morning and return him that was why he was able to see Peter and John it is important that you find men we are going to be praying that prayer I have no man and when Jesus came Jesus spoke to him and then the man was healed that men can be delayed sometimes not because of a cause that they created themselves sometimes it is self-inflicting but sometimes just happenstance life just happens in a way and a manner that you become disadvantaged and yet time passes and you're not able to make any use of time so God comes and he gives you what other people are looking for how come you have arrived so quickly and Jacob disguising as Esau he said because the Lord has brought it to me how come you have risen in ministry in just one year because the Lord he's called Ebenezer he's the stone of help he's brought me help how come gateway came to this facility that in under one year God has done what he has done because the Lord you see there are things that when you see you can see the signature of God helped by God helped by God lifted by God adorned by God that when others are bragging and trusting in horses and chariots you will say well I don't know how you got your own but as for me I'm a beneficiary of God's mercy a beneficiary of his lifting that what someone was praying for God took it and gave you as a gift may that be your testimony tonight in the name of Jesus Christ listen beloved let me tell you this it is true that the race is not to the swift and you believe me on that nor the battle to the strong nor even bread sometimes to those who are wise and of understanding honestly I can tell you it is not of him that willeth nor of him that runneth it is of the Lord that showeth mercy I am an advocate of diligence responsibility and productivity but unfortunately there are times that life just happens that in spite of your diligence in spite of your productivity just tribal sentiments alone can make you a victim even if you are productive gender alone can make you a victim even though you are productive unfortunately your sociological context the color of your skin in many parts of the world can make you a victim even though you are productive at that point you will need more than productivity and diligence hallelujah many today have been delayed there are people who have not been promoted for 10 years it's not an issue of capacity it's not an issue of the absence of diligence biases and sentiments they became victims of life there is good news for you God is able to give men restoration He's able to give men speed let me speak only to a receiver that God is able to give restoration and is able to bring speed you believe that shout amen hallelujah now I'm going to be giving you four prophetic keys that are responsible for activating speed
please never forget this for the rest of your life i like you to lay your hands on your head with determination and pray in the spirit for one minute father my life is about to change let the entrance of your word let this mystery transform my life forever a believer is laying his hands upon your head in the name of jesus christ go ahead and pray remember our song yesterday you are still praying but thou O oh lord are a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh lord are a shield for me my glory the lifter up of my head are you praying but thou O oh lord had a shield for me my glory you lift my head but thou O oh Lord had a shield for me you're my glory the lifter up of my head you're my glory the lifter up of my head you're my glory the lifter up of my head you're my glory you're my glory ah in jesus name we pray who is ready for speed let's write the keys key number one the first key that controls the manifestation of speed in the life of any believer as a system of advantage to your christian adventure is wisdom the first regulator of speed is wisdom matthew chapter 25 please from verse 1 to 13 we may not have the liberty to read the entire text but the bible talks to us about 10 virgins it's a parable 10 virgins how many virgins now look up please the bible lets us know that from the beginning of that parable to the end they all remain virgins none of them were defiled in as much as we understand are we together now they were virgins so it was not an issue of righteousness or unrighteousness it was not an issue of sin or holiness it was an issue of wisdom or foolishness they were all virgins they had lambs but the Bible says five among them whilst they were preparing for the arrival of the bridegroom like you are preparing for your destiny they factored in the Bible says through wisdom a man having separated himself seeketh and intermeddleth with all wisdom it is wisdom that makes you to be thoughtful to anticipate the future to prepare for the best but to also brace up for whatever comes so the Bible says they were all virgins. We didn't know from the story initially whether they were wise or they were foolish. They were all virgins. Time would tell us who was wise and who was foolish. Are we learning now? The Bible says that some in carrying their lambs, they said peradventure, the bridegroom may have conditions beyond his control and that may affect his arriving early let's not be careless let's not give chances we have our lambs but let us take extra oil someone say extra oil extra. one more time say extra oil extra. not oil there was already oil in the lamb but they carried extra oil how many of you know that that would have been an extra burden for them but they still carried it they still carried it the sufferings of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us there are things that are needed but they are heavy and yet there is a mandate on you to still carry them it's a difficult thing to juggle between your career and efficient prayer still carry it it is difficult to juggle between parenting and being fervent in spirit and in the word it's difficult to live at the other end of town and still be coming to church but your diligence is you carrying extra oil is someone learning now the bible says they carry the extra oil and then they all got there 
seated as virgins i'm sure discussing with one another but the delay of the bridegroom began to separate the virgins into two groups it was not their fault they all anticipated the bridegroom to come on time like you expected to go through life on time and because things happen it was not their making and yet they were still called fools for not anticipating for not anticipating the bible calls a man foolish for not anticipating that one day your uncle may not be in government again and then to leave him and start depending on god and learning how to depend on god the bible calls such a person foolish every time you do not carry extra you are foolish the wisdom there is in the ability to carry extra go the extra mile pray the extra mile serve the extra mile give the extra mile labor diligently the extra mile extra can literally be the difference between wisdom and foolishness so the bible says the bridegroom delayed and in the passage of time their lambs began to go dim not because anything was wrong with the lantern there was no oil and the bible says they ran to the wise virgins and they said please could you give us of your oil and they said no 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 we're sorry less if we give it to you what if the bridegroom delays further it means all of us will now be called foolish we're sorry we carry just enough for our journey however we can give you a recommendation go to them that sell that means to those who are foolish there is always them there are always them that sell there are custodians of god's grace there are custodians of god's wisdom there are custodians of the anointing by grace and by mercy and the bible says if you discover that time is against you and your lamp is dying look for those that sell quickly and go to them are we together now you find out that you've been failing you've been losing money don't wait till you lose everything find them that sell there are those who sell wisdom the word sell there does not just mean transact are we together now dispense value but it comes at a cost i preached a message years ago called buy the truth and that the truth is not cheap it is free but it is not cheap and there are currencies we use to buy the truth hunger is currency meekness is currency honor is currency passion is currency diligence is currency buy the truth and when you find it it says sell it not are we learning so go to them that sell by the message of God for many of you you have come for this conference as proof that wisdom is at work in your life because you look left right and center there's no advancement there's no speed there's no testimony one great testimony and then the remaining year full of tears and you said no my lamp is going dim lest I be called a foolish virgin let me run to gateway church I congratulate you for demonstrating wisdom because you have come and by the privilege of God's mercy you have come to encounter them that sell oh yes there are them that sell listen scarcity is not a generic phenomenon don't generalize scarcity scarcity is relative to perception scarcity is relative to wherewithal even when there was no food in Samaria there were two people who were spared the king and the priest who was the prophet and now the Bible says you are both you are a king and you are a prophet that means even in famine your priesthood and your kingship should be garrisons they should protect you lifter up of my head you're the lifter up of my head you are the lifter up of my head wisdom Hear me, ladies and gentlemen. There are very few believers I submit to you who know the value of wisdom. Most people do not know the value of wisdom. So here's how it works. It's a tripartite combo. It is wisdom or knowledge 
understanding and wisdom three of them work together you cannot have wisdom until you have understanding and you cannot have understanding until you have knowledge what is knowledge an acquisition of facts truths a collation of useful information bringing within your space a body of useful information is called knowledge understanding is a comprehension of the working dynamics that activates those laws those truths those information a comprehension on how to activate those truths so that they deliver is called understanding wisdom is the application of that which you now know are we together now so the bible says through wisdom a house is built you need knowledge then you need understanding then you need wisdom most believers lack wisdom because they lack knowledge those who have knowledge have awareness but no comprehension they are ever learning but never coming onto the truth and the secret of understanding is an encounter with the spirit of understanding and submitting yourself to a teaching priest the utopian enoch said how can i accept some man teach me jeremiah chapter 3 and verse 15 and i will give you pastors or shepherds according to my heart and they shall feed you jeremiah 3 15 they will feed you with knowledge and with understanding you can find the information at home but you may not prosper by that information it says when i came to the house of the lord then understood i there is understanding in the house of god are we together is someone learning someone say wisdom you want to redeem time you must encounter wisdom and i pray for you an end to foolish decisions has come tonight an end to destiny sabotaging decisions comes to an end this night you see how do i know that wisdom is at work in my life by the quality of your decisions and the results that follow how do i know wisdom is at work in my life i repeat by the quality the superiority of the decisions that you make if your decisions are not pro advancement not pro kingdom not pro glory not pro honor always retrogressing you and bringing you down wisdom is deficient hallelujah for instance rather than wasting five years of my life i rather invest two hours to read one book by a veteran who has wisdom with proof i have redeemed five years in two hours of diligence it is called wisdom are we together now someone's pain has been documented in a book and in two hours i can read it and learn the pain that took someone 15 years to even discover and adjust and by that i can gain 10 more years that is wisdom planning is a subset of wisdom that you get up in the morning and you don't just freelance your day whatever will be will be it's a waste of your day how about sitting back to meditate to think what is my day going to be like what are my priorities today it is wisdom we gain time and we experience speed when we engage wisdom let me give you number two very quickly the second key that controls speed are you ready is called favor ah shout favor shout it like you are ready to receive it exodus chapter 12 and verse 36 favor blessed be the name of the lord favor exodus 12 36 and the lord gave the people favor in the sight of the egyptians so that they lent unto them such things as they required and they spoiled the egyptians so that they would not need to look for those things again the time they would have taken to look for those things by favor god brought them to your life are we together now 
favor is a very powerful mystery in the kingdom it is an accelerator of destiny i am telling you one day one manifestation of the favor of god upon your life can be equivalent to many many years not days many years of struggle what is favor god raising men to help you what is favor god raising men to invest their credibility to invest their time to invest their energy towards your success what is favor god causing men to show you unusual kindness god raising men to grant you unusual access favor most people do not have favor esther chapter 2 please from verse 8 and 9 let's look at it quickly favor is resting on someone tonight favor does not mean an end to diligence no diligence in fact is an enhancer of favor the idea that favor is a license to be careless to not work to not do anything is a mediocre idea of favor favor is enhanced by diligence one of the laws that control favor is value one of the laws that control favor is diligence one of the laws that control favor as relationships there are laws favor is not automatic hello look at me favor is not automatic no it does not just happen favor is at the instance of activating some of these laws proverbs 13 15 says the uh, it, it says um how does he put it give it to us please and then we'll go back to esther chapter 2 i just want to quote um proverbs 13 15 good understanding thank you it giveth favor but the bible says the way of transgressors is hard you see there the mother that gives birth to favor is called good understanding and the mother that gives birth to hardship is called transgression a violator of god's laws back to esther please chapter 2 and verse 8 let's work with the time we have left we're about to pray esther chapter 2 and verse 8 the bible says so when it came to pass speaking about esther now when the king's commandment and his decree was heard the bible says they gathered many virgins together unto shushan the palace and to the custody of Haggai, that esther was brought also to the king's house to the custody of Haggai, the keeper of the women verse 9 i like verse 9 my god the bible says and the maiden pleased him and she obtained kindness of him what was the proof the bible says he speedily gave her he speedily gave her not that he gave her he speedily gave her that's the proof of favor can i tell you giving must come on time to profit you when giving comes late it can still be a waste are we together now yes the lord here in the day of trouble may the god of jacob defend you the bible says may he send you help from his sanctuary in the name of jesus someone you are receiving help that is manifest as favor in the name of jesus christ the bible says withhold not good from him that it is due when it is within your power do not tell him go and come tomorrow because you would delay him there are some of you you have people around your life who can give you but until the need for that thing dies before they arrive it's not enough to have givers you must have favor so that the giving comes with speed that you want to treat someone in the hospital and the money for the surgery comes after the person is dead it doesn't profit you again help must come on time for it to be profitable i'm prophesying speed over someone that in the name of jesus everyone anointed by god to come to your rescue but they have been delayed by the powers of darkness or laxity on their own path i pray for you after this conference they come speedily speedily to help you speedily to lift you speedily to provide a leverage through their credibility in the name of jesus christ please be seated favor go back and cry for favor cry for favor i don't know how people survive without it man arising for your sake man helping you can i tell you this i prayed a prayer for my people years ago and i want to pray that prayer for you now 
may you never be so poor that all you have is money let me say it again may you never be so poor that all you have are pieces of papers with printings on it if all you have in your life is money you are really poor everything money can buy there are harder currencies that can buy it one of the hardest currencies available to men outside of the holy spirit and wisdom are strategic relationships everything money buys can be paid for with relationships the only reason money has value is because there is a man to accept it as a legal tender destroy all the men on earth and open all the bank safes your paper becomes useless your assets become useless what gives value to anything transaction amen when god really wants to help you he gives you beyond paper he connects you to the heart of man let me show you a scripture and then speak it over your life who is learning already numbers chapter 1 and verse 5 if you're a man of god here receive this as a prophetic word for the next season of your life read with me one to go these are the names of the men that shall stand with you men that shall every time god gives a mandate there are men and the men have names he said these are the names they are countable they are finite for somebody john is somewhere to help you for someone gabriel is somewhere to help you the men have names these are the names of the men that shall stand with you where you are scarce of men not not having any helper i pray for you those who have been mandated by god to find you and help you in the name of jesus god will gravitate them towards your destiny god will gravitate them towards your destiny God who gravitates them towards your destiny. God will bring them to your ministry. Let me tell you this. Honestly, hear me. The day you find a helper of destiny, that day you will enter your rest. And you believe me when I tell you. There are many people with all due respect, life is hard ministry is hard you are as favored as who is willing to help you you are as favored as who is interested in your joy interested in your pain interested in your rising oh your help has come Oh, 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 oh. Oh, 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 use one minute to receive it as a prophetic word. Sit down. Let's find somewhere to pray. So the keys that control speed, number one, wisdom. Number two, favor. Are you ready for number three? The third key that activates speed over your life is praying speed provoking prayers. There are speed provoking prayers. Speed provoking prayers. First Kings 18 from verse 42. Let's hurry up, please. Speed provoking prayers. The Bible says, So Ahab went to eat and to drink, but Elijah went up to the top of Carmel and he cast himself down upon the earth. He put his face between his knees. Next verse. The Bible says he, he prayed and he told the servant, Go up, go and check, go up, go and check. He did that seven times. Next verse. The Bible says at the seventh time, he said, Behold, there ariseth a cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up and say to Ahab, Prepare your chariot and get down, lest the rain stop you. 
it looked like Ahab had gone ahead of him and the man was delayed you are never delayed when you stay to pray in fact when you pray you gain speed 45 the Bible says it came to pass that the heavens were black and there was great rain and I have rolled down and went to Jezreel shout 46 with me if you're a believer at the end of that prayer what happened the hand of God was upon Elijah and he girded his loins and ran before Ahab to the entrance of Israel. You can pray speed provoking prayer. Lord, by my human calculation, it would take 10 years to arrive at this level in ministry. But I cry unto the God that shows men speed. And in one year, my God can give you acceleration. Do you believe this? Speed. Psalm 109, 26 and 27. Psalm 109. Give you one more and then we'll pray. I'm praying that God is changing someone's life tonight. Are you ready? We'll read it together. 26 and 27. Ready? As loud as you can. One, two, go. Help me, O oh Lord. Save me according to your mercy aha uh -huh, 27 that i may know he said help me in a way that everyone will know that this one is your hand this one is not just political connection this one there is a way god comes through for you in ministry there is a way God comes through for you in your family that men will step back and say, we have not seen it in this fashion. This one is God's grace. How are you sleeping? And a helper wakes you and takes take 10 hectares of land. It is my gift. The Lord said I should give you. Bring three of your children have been mandated by God to sponsor their education till PhD. Leave the bills to me. He said, help me, oh God, that they may know that this is your hand. That this is your hand. Listen, I vowed a vow and I cried in prayer to God. I said, Lord, may I never do anything that does not have the signature of your hand. Let it be clear that this one is your hand ministry by your hand finances by your hand ladies and gentlemen hear me god can help men oh don't get used to pain don't get used to suffering god can help men man of god you are not the first to build you are not the first to look for land hey wake up from that unbelief God can help man. Are you hearing me? God can amplify your voice and echo it across the length and the breadth of the nations. There are things men can do. There are things Satan can do. But there are things only God can do. There are things only God can do. To raise an ordinary person from a family in Portacot here there are things only God can do listen ladies and gentlemen hear me it was in this same Portacot I was in this Portacot many years ago many of you may not know 2007 or there about six or seven I remember I came in briefly to this city I saw the wonders of God when I arrived this city I stopped I will not mention the street I stopped there with 800 naira in my pocket that was all I had 800 home and abroad I remember walking around the street and praying God how am I going to live here if you keep giving excuses you will remain where you are I'm not being I'm not being unsympathetic with your pain but I'm getting you angry tonight 
to say lord these excuses have been given as to why ministry is not growing these excuses have been given as to why i'm always late paying my children's school fees i confess that i don't know what to do but i cry unto you jehovah let your hand be upon me there are people who need to pray the prayer of jabez oh that thou wouldest bless me take away shame take away reproach take away shame take away reproach from my life number four this is where we stop tonight I have just a few minutes left when I give you this fourth one I'm going to be making some prophetic declarations from the depth of my spirit do we have all the prayer requests please ushers if you can drop them uh, or bring them we have, have, where, where, are the, where are the requests is it possible to have them at the altar if it's possible please if, if I have the permission let's just do that because for someone this is one conference bar that you will know you encounter the God of heaven listen and for someone who is listening by radio someone who is watching through the internet or those who are connected across all the satellite expressions make sure your heart this is the moment that if you miss it would take a long time for these kinds of seasons to come again for some of you you are here because your mother prayed and fasted for weeks your coming here is an answer to mama's prayer she said i may not have done well with my life but lord help my child don't focus on me help my child and god drew, drew you from all over portacot and brought you here tonight men can encounter God the last key in addition to wisdom my God I sense such a strong anointing here wisdom favor speed provoking prayers and then finally the prophetic the fourth key that controls speed is the prophetic sir can I request that you bring it up here? Do I have, please. You don't have to pour it out, just bring it. I just want to make contact with it. So one of, let's have one person. If you're here to drop it, I want to place my hand there. Let the God that answers by fire tonight, that every captivity that has tied you and said you will not laugh, that you will not rejoice. In the name of Jesus, if God be God, he must give way finally this night. second kings please chapter 7 if you can stand please stand we will read verse 1 and we'll read verse 18 i want to show you how the prophetic controls speed if you are writing right oh be patient and write because some things need to give way this night second kings and elisha said hear ye the word of the lord Thus saith the Lord, tomorrow by this time. Tomorrow by this time. Now listen. Listen. The prophetic has two layers. It's unfortunate that the prophetic has been abused. And so for many people, well, once you hear the prophetic your heart just closes because of memories of immaturity abuses excesses unfortunately and we keep praying that god will help the body of christ and clean up everything that needs to be cleaned up in terms of the negative aspects of the prophetic but listen if you do not encounter the prophetic there are certain dimensions you will never rise to the bible says the kingdom was built on a formula. Christ is the chief cornerstone. But immediately you encounter Christ, there are two unique ministries you must encounter to rise. They are called the foundations of the apostles and the prophets. 
many ministries today are stagnated because they have not experienced the prophetic your Jesus needed three prophets in his life to rise your Jesus as the word number one Simeon the prophet number two Anna the prophetess number three John the Baptist three your Jesus walked upon the earth until he encountered John the Baptist and the Bible says on baptizing him he says so far to be so then your Bible says the heavens opened and a voice spoke these things are ordinances they are not suggestions it is how the kingdom operates can I tell you a time comes in your life where you have exhausted everything you know to do at that point God brings you face to face with the prophetic and let me tell you something about the prophetic look at me a man of God can be a prophet but not sent to you he can speak scripture as a blessing but not have any word uniquely for your rising because he was not sent to you the Bible says there were many widows in Zarephath but to none was Elijah sent that means Elijah was sent to one maybe on his way going to meet the widow in Zarephath he saw other widows good afternoon prophet and all he told them was good afternoon and kept going until he went to the woman he was sent to happy is the man that encounters the grace sent to you sent to you sends to you sends to you hallelujah you're about to receive something now listen there are two dimensions to the prophetic the first dimension of the prophetic is called the revelatory dimension and the assignment of that dimension is to exhort and comfort you by supplying by the wisdom of the spirit information that bring direction that bring perspective and help to interpret the happenings around your life as it relates to your destiny and God's program revelatory but the most superior dimension of the prophetic is called the creative dimension of the prophetic that one does not reveal it makes what has no business happening to happen so when the prophet said by this time tomorrow he was not giving them privileged information nothing would have happened tomorrow but by the prophetic he programmed an event that had no business happening are you understanding this now so i can tell you for instance maybe your name is john and you will say yes how do you know that's the revelatory dimension of the prophetic but when i speak to you and say in the name of jesus may your helper show up and someone who has no business coming to your life it falls upon a helper like a mantle and literally redirects the course of his life until that word stays this is why you will see our fathers of faith they may not necessarily give you any direct revelation but men like baba deboy will say there's someone here the Lord says I should tell you that it will be your season of laughter and people shout amen very casually let me tell you what happens when a prophetic word that is genuine is released what happens is that the spirit of wisdom goes into motion immediately like a movie director it begins to find the human components who must partner with prophecy are we together now yes that's how it works so when i say in the name of jesus let a helper arise the word does not die you see the spirit of wisdom in partnership with the angelic will now begin to move across port harcourt or any other place and then come to men now because men have their will they can reject it they can reject being used by god and you will keep using someone else if mary rejected being used by god god would not force her he will look for another virgin that's why there was no name Mary written in prophecy. It says a virgin shall conceive. Any virgin at all. That's why the angel came to Mary and said, God wants to use your womb. She said, be it unto me. I agree to partner with prophecy. So let me tell you this. 
I'm saying this because in a prophetic atmosphere like this, it is dangerous to put your mind on somebody specific. Apostle, while you are prophesying, my mind is going to my uncle. You are practicing idolatry. God uses men, but you don't choose the men for him to use. You look onto Jesus and there are 8.2 billion people on earth. If one man refuses, God will raise another one. Are we together now? So I'm saying this so that whilst I'm praying, you don't shout amen and you are eyeing somebody who has money around. You are praying, I hope this man is hearing me. No. Don't put anybody under pressure. They looked unto him. I vowed that I will never look unto a man even though God will use men. But my eyes are on Jesus. Let God choose the men he will use to help you. Let God select and you will see that sometimes God will use lepers. Lepers. Because all the able-bodied men were afraid and he will use lepers. And if there are no lepers, he will use a fish and make it to carry a coin for your sake. God for you. Help that lady please. The prophetic. Verse 18. There was a foolish man who made up his mind and he said even if god will open the windows of heaven will this happen and the prophet said because you have despised prophesying you will see it as an evidence that god is true but you will not partake of it he died at the gate of breakthrough and the bible says in verse 18 it came to pass may it come to pass in your life it came to pass as the man of God had spoken to the king. Listen, the real proof of power is that what you say comes to pass. Mm. The real proof of power is not just falling and rising. And God said, and there was, and he saw, and God said, and there was, and he saw, the word became flesh and it was manifest when a man of God fasts and prays and keeps building his spirit man it is so that by mercy and grace he can access superior dimensions of spiritual power that when you speak your words do not become barren of performance how shall these things be Mary said seeing that I know not a man and Gabriel replies and says the power of the Holy Ghost shall come upon you shall overshadow you then she says be it unto me according to your word I'm about to speak over your life as well as pray over this I'm standing in faith with the angel over this commission the men and women of the gospel here represented and under this corporate anointing just let me two or three minutes and we're done for tonight. But everywhere across Port Harcourt, following by television, following by radio, following by internet, wherever you are across the stations, I'm going to be laying my hands upon this request in one minute. I'd like you to agree with me in prayer as you cry that every Egyptian that followed me here that I will see them no more forever. Open your mouth and begin to pray. Someone open your mouth and pray. 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 Lord, visit families. Turn their mornings to dancing. Turn their sorrow to joy. Take a minute and invest in prayer that these Egyptians that I see today by the mercies of God, by the wisdom of God, I see them no more forever. Salene kebereches kabada katosh, rapa tabala katabela na bagetes, shadabala na Father, visit families. 
give your people testimonies in the name of Jesus in the name of Jesus I decree and declare that everything you have written here by faith I stand in faith and partnership with the angel over this commission and all the servants of the living God here represented I decree and declare in the name of Jesus let every request here be turned to answers be turned to testimonies 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 hallelujah there are four ways God answers prayer number one by supernatural intervention number two by wisdom to help you make advancing decisions pro destiny decisions number three by the ministry of men number four he answers by making you grow these are the four ways God answers prayer there are many requests that are growth dependent they were not supposed to be requests in the first place it is that the version of you the answer is looking for has not yet become so God answers the prayer by causing you to grow there are times God causes you, he answers you by giving you wisdom so that you make decisions that bail you out. There are times God answers by giving you access to men. There are times God answers by direct supernatural intervention. Now I will speak over your life. I am a product of prophecy. I know what the prophetic can do when it is received. I am a product of the lifting power of the prophetic for some of you you have come here it's like a weary land nothing is working this year has not done you well honestly for some of you if you are to be very honest you don't even know which one is better than which because every month has been tears the Lord has sent us here by help by mercy as one of the four carpenters to judge these horns that have lifted up themselves against Judah, against Israel, and against Jerusalem. Therefore, by the privilege of this mantle and this election of grace, let me speak over a believer who has the faith to receive every door that has been closed over your destiny in the name that is above all names. I command that door to be opened now. Number two, I want to call by prophecy the helpers of your destiny. There are four kinds of men you need to rise in destiny. Number one, divine connectors. Number two, men of influence. Number three, gifted men. Number four, burden bearers. I pray for you. These four groups of men, may they show up this season in your life. May they show up this season in your life. May they show up in your ministry, show up in your family, show up in your business. In the name of Jesus. Let me pray a prayer for you that I pray for my people back home. Hear me. It is one thing to be gifted, but you are only rewarded when your value serves the problem of men who have capacity to discern and to reward joseph solved the dream of three people two of them kept him in prison only one brought him out you can have the ability to interpret dreams but if it is not pharaoh's dream you are interpreting you will still remain in prison some of you have been interpreting dreams of wine pressers and bakers you are gifted ordained for the throne but men of capacity are yet to drink of your value i pray for you may god keep changing your audience changing your audience until you meet those who have value for what you carry i say it again may my god keep changing your audience 
changing your audience until you collide with men who can reward what you carry listen it is a terrible thing to be gifted and to be in the presence of those who have no recognition or honor for what you carry you will be despised even when you are jesus there were people who saw jesus once and their lives changed there were others who had him in their presence and they scorched him and insulted him you can be a world changer but in the presence of a wrong audience they will trivialize your anointing trivialize the grace you carry but i'm praying for you again for someone who did not receive it the first time may my god take you to men who have an appreciation for what you carry in the name of jesus hear me the bible says i want you to listen very carefully it says and jabez was more honorable than his brethren but it was not always so the bible says as a young boy he innocently came out of the womb of his mother but because of her pain she named him jabez sorrow was not his making but he was a victim of prophecy not from a bad woman pain can make people do things they didn't want to do pain can make someone say it will not be well with you whereas they did not mean it but one day jabez got angry and he says oh that thou wouldest bless me i pray for you in the name of jesus christ what god did in the life of jabez between now and december may my god do it in your life what god did in the life of jabez enlargement increase honor may my god make it happen in your life in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus hear me the bible says the man samson he lost through carelessness the secret and the covenant and the consecration that protected his oil he was mysteriously endued with the spirit of might but like every anointing there are consecrations that protect the oil you don't need to bother about the oil depleting if you maintain the rudiments of the consecration and in this case he fell to carelessness and Delilah lured him the Bible says he got up like before and found out that his hair had gone the symbol of his strength and the first thing they plucked out was his eyes they took away his capacity to see but then the Bible says at the end of his life I'm saying this for someone only foolish people will put their pillars in front of the stage for everybody to see in ancient temples the pillar of anything is the reason why that thing stands are we together now i'm not talking in terms of structure even though it was structure the, a pillar represents the secret of your stability you don't put it on stage a pillar is hidden in the secret place the pillar is your prayer life the pillar is your giving there are things that are not for public they are the pillars it is what keeps you standing it is your covenant with god you don't throw it away on stage uh -uh. but they build the pillars on stage and he reached out to one of them and while there was a crowd like this mocking the god of heaven and mocking him he prayed a prayer god would you restore one last time i know that i missed it when this conference was organized last year i was laughing at those who came you may be saying because i was not a christian now one year later i have seen the value lord restore the things i would have gotten since last year but my carelessness brought me this pain the bible says while the hair of samson was growing back the people were too distracted to see what god was doing and with one push 
he didn't push everyone he only pushed two pillars there are things when you touch everything crumbles they are called pillars let me digress to teach you there are pillars that must not be compromised in your life your prayer life pillars your word study life pillars your passion for god pillars it is better to cancel an invitation and honor the one between you and god than to be around everywhere and yet your secret place is empty pillars this is not a pastor's conference but please just allow me say it i'm speaking to someone by the spirit it's time to get back he's not seen your face for a long time because you are busy being a celebrity remember where he took you from shut the gates and rebuild the pillars the bible says samson pushed the pillars and with the pillars falling everything fell that he killed more people at his death than he did in his lifetime let me speak to someone where you have failed through attacks through carelessness because you were not born again i speak to you let this be a voice of mercy may my god start with you again empower you again anoint you again in the name of jesus christ for someone who is about to lose his bishopric through carelessness let this be a voice of mercy that god restores you in the name of jesus in the name of jesus in the name of jesus now if you will give me one more minute i understand that tomorrow is election in river state is it okay if we sow a seed of prayer in one minute is that all right do you believe in that whatever it is the blood of your child or your spouse is not worth it open your mouth and pray in one minute that god will move over this land protect and preserve our prayer as a church is for protection and preservation protection and preservation that as people exercise their franchise god will show mercy let there be peace in your state let there be understanding let there be stability in jesus mighty name we pray everyone stand please everyone stand the Bible says the Lord added daily as many as should be saved. There are people who came here trusting God to visit them but have never met the God of the Bible. You may receive a healing. You may receive deliverance. You may receive all kinds of impartations. But if that is not with Jesus at the center of your life, then I want you to know that it was a poor bargain. Everyone Jesus healed still died. Even Lazarus who rose up from the dead still died again. Everybody who was delivered still died eventually. But there is life beyond the grave. And Jesus is the way who leads to that life. There are thousands of people across this auditorium, this beautiful campground, and the many who are outside, the many who are around Port Harcourt, and perhaps someone you are listening by radio or watching by television or the internet, maybe even a rebroadcast, and you are saying, Apostle, do you mean me? Absolutely. Jesus is speaking to you. We're out of time, but for your sake, I request that we'll have, even if it is two minutes, I'm going to count one to five. You are saying, Apostle, I do not want this conference tonight to be over without giving me an opportunity to make it right with Jesus or to rededicate my life. Wherever you are, you are far from me. So I will request that you run when it is time. I'm going to count one to five. When it has to do with the business of Jesus, there is no compulsion. But the Bible says, come unto me, Jesus was speaking, all ye that are weary and heavy laden, 
he says I will give you rest I want to make that call God bless you my dear sisters as I count one to five leave your seat don't say someone is watching me don't say I need someone to be the first this is the business between you and your maker your king and your savior at the fifth count I'll begin to pray wherever you are begin to come now let's honor them as they come one come on gateway Port Harcourt. let's celebrate the miracle of salvation two those who are coming from far behind would you walk swiftly make haste three God bless you as you come let's motivate them as we clap keep coming male and female young and old brothers and sisters come 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 to Jesus keep clapping until the last person is here you are sowing that seed in their lives this is how joy and celebration will be in your own life four I still see people rushing God bless you as you come I still see people running through the aisles God bless you as you come in Jesus mighty name we pray on behalf of Jesus Christ and on behalf of his servant the angel over this house I congratulate and I salute every one of you for making this noble decision this is the wisest decision that any man can make in this side of God's kingdom and I salute you for the courage the discernment to respond to the promptings of the spirit the Bible says as many who will come to him he will in no wise cast away may I request that you lift your right hand for those of you who are here and that includes all who are praying this prayer from across your expressions and those who are following online I like you to repeat after me not as though repeating a poem but you are repeating this before Jesus it is a genuine prayer confessing his lordship say it as loud and as clear as you can say Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus. Tonight, tonight I have heard your word I, heard your word. I, declare, I declare that I love you, I love you. with all my, heart. all my heart I believe that you are the son of God I believe that you died for my sin I believe that you rose again for my justification right now I receive Jesus into my heart as my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that the power of sin Satan hell and the grave is broken over my life from tonight I'm a child of God I go forward ever and backward never amen keep your beautiful hands as I pray for you father the Bible declares that as many who will come to you you will in no wise cast away I pray for these precious ones they have come declaring your Lordship over their lives in the name of Jesus I pray by the power of the Holy Spirit the grace to live the victorious Christian life is released upon you now I call you bona fide recipients of the life of God you are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus and you go from glory to glory from grace to grace in Jesus much less name we pray now please do me a favor ladies and gentlemen I want you to look to my left that will be your right from where you're standing there's a sister waving her hands representing the counselors please would you follow them they will have a word and a prayer with you in one minute and you'll be back to your seat let's honor them as they go is this the best you can do give them a big hand clap hallelujah whilst they're on their way going I speak over you that in the name of Jesus as this conference comes to an end by the power that raised Christ from the dead one by one you will receive your testimonies one by one they will be delivered like parcels to your life delivered like parcels to your destiny I call you blessed let this grace rest upon you you enjoy speed you enjoy advancement I say it again you enjoy speed you enjoy advancement 
speed in your destiny speed in ministry let that oil rest on you let that anointing rest on you and for everyone who came here with any point of contact i saw some of you holding bottles of oil or whatever you have come with as a point of contact i decree and declare in the name of jesus standing in partnership with the grace that is upon this house i speak over you we declare them anointed and in the name of jesus christ we call them instruments of signs and wonders instruments of signs and wonders in jesus name we pray amen and amen may the lord bless you and increase you in jesus name we pray